For centuries, humans have been obsessed with a peculiar dream, one that sounds like it came straight from a fairy tale or a wizard's handbook, turning lead into gold. Back in the days of medieval alchemists, this pursuit was more than just scientific curiosity, it was practically a spiritual quest. Alchemists believed that by purifying materials and understanding the secrets of nature, they could unlock not just wealth, but cosmic truths. They called it chrysopoeia, the magical transformation of a base metal into a noble one. Lead was considered heavy, impure, and earthly, while gold represented perfection, incorruptibility, and even divinity. The logic was, if the right combination of heat, chemicals, or maybe just divine insight could be found, lead would surrender its flaws and reveal the golden treasure within. But here's the reality check. No matter how many bubbling flasks or mysterious elixirs you throw at lead, chemistry just won't cut it. Gold and lead are totally different elements, made of different atoms with a different number of protons in their nuclei. Chemistry can mix, break apart, or recombine atoms, but it can't change what an atom is. That's the job of nuclear physics, and it wasn't until the 20th century that humanity figured out how to do what alchemists had only dreamed about. And now, fast forward to today, where the team at CERN, the home of the world's most powerful particle accelerator, has done something that might have made those old alchemists weep with joy, they've actually turned lead into gold. Not in some dusty laboratory with ancient scrolls, but inside the blinding, ultra-high-speed chaos of the Large Hadron Collider. It's not magic. It's science at its most mind-bending. Let's talk about CERN for a moment. It's the European Organization for Nuclear Research, located on the Franco-Swiss border. If there's a Disneyland for physicists, this is it. Beneath the surface, a massive ring 27 kilometers around hums with energy. It's the Large Hadron Collider, or LHC, the biggest and baddest particle accelerator in the world. In the LHC, particles are shot around this giant loop at near the speed of light, 99.999993% of it, to be precise. That's fast enough that if you sneezed, the particle beam could circle the Earth several times before your eyes opened again. When these particles smash into each other, they create tiny fireballs that mimic the conditions just after the Big Bang. Scientists use this to study fundamental particles, forces, and processes that make up everything in the universe. Among the many experiments at the LHC is ALICE, short for a Large Ion Collider Experiment. While most experiments at the LHC focus on proton collisions, ALICE specializes in smashing heavy ions like lead to study what happens when nuclei collide at ludicrous speeds. It's kind of like throwing two watches at each other at supersonic speed and trying to learn how watches work by analyzing the bits that fly off. But not every collision in the LHC is a direct head-on smash. Sometimes, two lead nuclei zoom past each other so closely that they almost touch but don't quite make contact. It's like two cars speeding down the highway, passing inches apart. No crash, but the shockwaves of their passing cause some serious electromagnetic chaos. And this is where our golden tale begins. Now here's the juicy part. When these high-speed lead nuclei narrowly miss each other in the LHC, something weird happens. Even though they don't collide directly, their electromagnetic fields, those invisible forces that come with any charged particle, interact violently. Think of each lead nucleus as a tiny, supercharged storm cloud, full of 82 protons and a mess of neutrons. When two of these clouds pass each other at near light speed, their electromagnetic fields compress into ultra-intense, flat pulses. These are pancake-shaped shock waves of energy, and they're filled with something very important. Photons. These aren't the ordinary photons from your flashlight or the sun. They're high-energy particles that can shake the insides of an atomic nucleus. When a lead nucleus gets hit by one of these photon pulses, its protons and neutrons get excited. So excited, in fact, that some of them may get kicked out entirely. If three protons get knocked out of a lead nucleus, it drops from 82 protons to 79. And guess what element has 79 protons? That's right, it's gold. That's nuclear alchemy. It's not a chemical trick or a secret incantation. It's pure physics happening inside the most advanced scientific machine humanity has ever built. 
And while this process has been theorized before, the Alice team at CERN has now actually seen it happen and measured it. Marco van Leeuwen, a spokesperson for Alice, summed it up beautifully, it is impressive to see that our detectors can handle head-on collisions producing thousands of particles, while also being sensitive to collisions where only a few particles are produced at a time. So in a sense, the LHC isn't just smashing atoms. It's rewriting the periodic table one collision at a time. Now, before you start digging through your couch cushions for old lead weights to turn into treasure, here's the catch. Yes, the LHC made gold. A lot of it in fact. During run 2 of the collider, from 2015 to 2018, the ALICE experiment alone produced around 86 billion gold nuclei. That sounds massive, and it is, but let's put it in perspective. Those 86 billion atoms of gold? They weigh about 29 picograms. You would need trillions of times more just to make a single gold ring. So, as far as making jewelry goes, we're still light years away from being able to toss lead in and get a necklace out. Worse still, these gold atoms don't stick around. They're born at enormous speeds, hurtling out of the collision zone with so much energy that they slam into the walls of the collider and shatter almost immediately. They fragment into protons, neutrons, and a variety of other particles. And they are gone. It's like creating billions of gold coins and then vaporizing them before they ever hit the ground. That's how fast the gold disappears. You can't collect it, you can't use it, and you definitely can't spend it. But that's not the point. The real treasure here isn't the gold itself. It's the fact that we now understand another tiny corner of the universe a bit better. We've confirmed a rare type of nuclear transformation, one that happens not in stars or supernovae, but right here on Earth, under our control. And every time we do that, we open new doors to knowledge and technology. So, why does any of this matter if we can't make a fortune off it? Great question. First off, this experiment is a massive leap forward in our understanding of something called electromagnetic dissociation, the process by which high-energy photons from a passing nucleus can knock particles out of another nucleus. This isn't just a neat party trick. It's an important physical process that affects how particles behave in high-energy environments, like inside stars, or in future particle colliders even more powerful than the LHC. By carefully measuring how often gold is created, and how it compares to other elements like mercury and thallium, physicists can test and refine their theoretical models. These models are the backbone of high-energy physics. They help us understand how particles interact, how atomic nuclei stay together, and even how the universe evolved in its earliest moments. John Jowett, another member of the ALICE team, put it clearly, the results also test and improve theoretical models of electromagnetic dissociation, which, beyond their intrinsic physics interest, are used to understand and predict beam losses that are a major limit on the performance of the LHC and future colliders. Think of it this way, every particle that escapes, every nucleus that breaks apart in an unexpected way, every proton that doesn't stay where it's supposed to, that's all valuable data. It tells scientists how to build better machines, how to avoid energy loss, and how to push the boundaries of what we can observe. In the future, this knowledge could feed into projects like building next-generation colliders or even understanding cosmic rays and space radiation. It might sound abstract, but today's abstract particle physics has a way of turning into tomorrow's life-changing technology. Just ask the folks who invented the internet at CERN. In the end, the dream of the alchemists has come true, but with a twist. We can turn lead into gold. Just not in the way they imagined. There's no philosopher's stone, no ancient incantation. Instead, there's a giant ring buried under the Alps, humming with energy, where atoms race and collide and transform in the blink of an eye. The gold we make is fleeting, gone before it can ever be seen or touched. But its value isn't in carrots or coins. It's in what it teaches us, about atoms, forces, and the universe itself. Alchemy was never really about gold. It was about transformation, about seeking the truth beneath appearances, about understanding the hidden structure of reality. And in that sense, what the scientists at CERN are doing is the purest alchemy of all.